Uh, I'm Kathy Kellenberger, and today I'd like to talk about SQL Server Integration Services deployment using the new project model. I am a senior consultant with Pragmatic Works. You can find me occasionally on Twitter at Aunt Kathy, and I have a new blog site, AuntKathySQL.com, and I'll post the slides and answer any questions on that site. The thing about SSIS, well really starting way back, whenever DTS uh, went away and SSIS was in, introduced, a lot of people were pretty scared and uh, not really sure how to start, and there was a pretty steep learning curve going from that technology to SSIS. So finally, folks are finally starting to get used to SSIS, and then we had a big change in 2012. I had another session a few months ago talking about all these changes, and uh, what I realized was that there is so much around deployment, and that is really the biggest area, so that's why I decided to have a session just on the deployment using this new project model. And I want to make sure everybody knows that it's not difficult at all to learn. It's very easy compared to making that switch from DTS to SSIS. So making this little in incremental switch is pretty easy. Another thing I want you to keep in mind uh, as I go through these, um, you're going to have to spend some time figuring out your approach, how you're going to use this technology, uh, figure out an approach and stick with it. Uh, try not to do some things one way, other things another way, and uh, you'll you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So what I would like to do is just kind of compare the old package deployment model, which is actually still available. You can still do things the old way if you would like, compared to the new project model. So uh, as far as availability, the old model is available in any version of SSIS, and this new project model is just available in 2012 and 2014 that just came out a couple days ago, in fact. The unit of work in the package model is the package, and of course in the project model it's a project. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to run all the all the packages in the product in the project at the same time. It just means when you deploy them and manage them, you're going to be working at the project level. The old way, uh, you had a ton of different choices on how to implement it. You could just have them uh, deploy to a share. You could have them installed in the MSDB database. They could be part of an SSIS package store. The new model, you 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 could still deploy those old ways if if you wanted. It's still available, but the new way is with the SSIS catalog. The old way, you had lots and lots of choices as far as configuration. Do I want to do configuration in files? Do I want to do configuration in tables, SQL tables? Do I want to include environment variables? With the new uh, model, we use parameters and environments, and you'll see what I'm talking about when I get to the demos. Uh, how do I configure security. Uh, the old way, if you had those uh, configuration files in files, configurations in files, those were not encrypted and they may have some sensitive information like connection strings and passwords. Uh, with the new project model, there's security built in. Uh, you could ex execute packages in the past using DTExec or DTExec UI. Uh, it, Project, you now have uh, a new version of DT Exec, and you can run it from the catalog, and you can also run them from T-SQL. So in the past, if you wanted to run a uh, package from a stored procedure, you know, the, that was kind of difficult to do without something like a command shell. Now there are actual T-SQL commands. Uh, logging, uh, previously you had to decide what you wanted to log and you had to go and set that up. Now you get logging by default. Uh, reporting, you had to figure out your own reporting based on the logging um, and now that reporting is built in. So it's kind of like 
getting a um, getting one of the uh, what am I trying to say frameworks that somebody like Jamie Thompson uh, or Jessica Moss, somebody like that had developed. So now it's just built in. So let's first talk about parameters and variables. What is a parameter? Uh, you'll hear me talk about parameters throughout today's session. So I kind of like to think of parameters as a special type of variable. Inside my package, I can have variables that I can uh, change the value of, I can use in many different ways, expressions, scripts, properties, all kinds of ways I can use variables. A parameter, the scope is, is slightly different. Inside my package, I can see the parameter, but I cannot change the value of it. So inside my package, my parameter is available to me, but, I, but it's read-only. So I can use it um, on the right hand of an expression. I can, I can take that parameter and use it in an expression, use it in a script. I just can't change the value of it. There's also uh, parameters at the package level and parameters at the project level. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about here. And I have a project already put together. I ended up on the wrong monitor. Let me bring it over. And uh, this is a very, very, let's see, let me find the right, right uh, package that I'm interested in, this child package. This package is very, very simple. Basically, all I'm doing is running a T-SQL command that is going to insert a value in a table. And I'm using a variable called SQL command to uh, I build that command in my uh, package. So let's take a look at the variables down here. And my SQL command variable, everything's in one of the wrong monitor today. Let's see if I've got, yeah, I've got a, an insert statement that um, sends the, the package name and along with a message stored in this str message variable. 